morning. So again, we're going to talk about seminars uh, built around 401k and IRA rollovers. This uh, information that we'll talk about today uh, is going to be specifically about uh, qualified funds and working with qualified funds. We'll sprinkle in some information on seminars and how they work. Uh, and so I welcome you to ask any questions of Dave that you might have about how seminars, how his seminars are working, how uh, the process works, what his, research, what his returns are, mailing costs, things like that. And we're also going to learn some uh, quick tips on uh, things that you need to know about 401ks and IRAs in general. So good webinar for sure. Thank you all again for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and start this morning. Uh, Dave is actually in the building this morning, so we'll have him live here just shortly. But I want to start and give you a couple of things that we do here at IAMS uh, to help you grow your business. So got a couple of programs I think that most of you by now are aware of. As I look at our uh, attendees, I know that many of you uh, have done business with us or are currently doing business with us. So many of you are probably aware of our referred producer program and our marketing reimbursement programs. I wanted to uh, let you know that as, at least based on our understanding, we feel like we can maintain these uh, programs in the post-DOL world. And certainly through the end of 2017, we will be maintaining them. We think that we will be able to maintain them throughout. Programs are pretty simple. You refer someone to us, uh, we give you a little uh, uh, referral bonus uh, for that, and that comes in the form of a check. And then as they do business going forward, uh, we send you an ongoing bonus based on the level of business that they do, uh, basically 20 basis points, for instance, on annuity. So they add up to be some pretty good checks over time. We pay those out quarterly, and when you get a check with the statement from us, you'll note that it's an RPM check. We send out uh, literally thousands of dollars in RPM uh, dollars right now and that's a, a continually growing program so for those of you that have been kind enough to give us referrals thank you very much and hopefully you're receiving your checks on a regular basis for those of you that may know someone that could profit from uh, the services products training uh, incentives things that we do here at IMS to help you grow your business and you think that you've got a a, a, a affiliate or someone that you know or uh, someone's in the business that's a good friend of yours that you want to point our way, we'd certainly love uh, to meet them. And so just uh, give your sales director here a call. Uh, give me a call if you like and give us the name. We'll do the, we'll go through the process. None of, nothing uh, that we do for you comes out of their pocket. We strictly uh, pay that out of here to you as a bonus. So uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of that. Marketing reimbursement, again, we send out literally thousands of dollars in checks on that on a, on a monthly basis as well. Um, based on the business that you do with IAMS, money goes into your marketing reimbursement account as you do things to help you grow your business, whether it's mailings, upgrades in systems, what have you, anything that you do to help you grow your business, that is marketing reimbursement reimbursable. Go ahead and send us those receipts. We'll send you out a check, uh, and kind of a dollar for dollar match on your spend. So, uh, if you have any questions on either of those, certainly give me a call. That number here is, of course, 800 255 5055. I want to make sure for those of you that are just getting aboard with us that you're familiar with our new producer bonus. Uh, you can pretty well see it there on the screen in front of you. As you probably noted, they're kind of designed to grow your business and help you grow your business. I wanted to bring your uh, attention to uh, the $500,000 level as a for instance because you see there that one of the offers is that uh, will kind of get you started in, down the seminar path so we will pay for Dave's coaching we'll pay for your first million we'll pay for materials to get you on the road uh, and for instance after today if you say hey I like what, what they're doing there on the 401k IRA seminar that's a way to get us uh, to take care of all of the expense of that for you so Take a closer look at that. See if that's something that you might have interest in. Uh, look at all the other new producer levels. You can pick and choose at any one of those levels the uh, the new producer bonus that best fits your particular situation. And all the business that you have that you do with us counts towards those uh, new producer bonuses. So nothing goes unaccounted for. I um, want to make sure that you all kind of kept you know throughout the industry when I talk to our peers, um, you know, our competitors, if you will, all of them uh, would tell you that if they looked across the industry, nobody has better back office support than I am in terms of, you know, helping you from the submission to commission 
uh, process step by step. There's nobody that's better at us. We've gotten a great reputation and I think well earned uh, really for two reasons. Number one, when you pick up the phone and call us, we're going to pick up the phone and answer. And that's a that's a really a nice feature. You're not going to get voicemail or have to, to wait uh, to you know, 24 hours or 48 hours and find out what's going on with your case. And number two, we also very proactively help you. Uh, so you're going to get a call. If you have a piece of business in with us, you're going to get a call about once a week. You'll get an email uh, with any updates as well. Just kind of keeping you in the loop on what's going on with your case so that you're never left out in the cold wondering what's going on. And so we can make sure that we get things through on a timely basis for you. We do best, do our best to handle everything that we can for you when we need to get you involved. Obviously, uh, we're going to call on you and let you know uh, what happen or how we can help you uh, to get your cases moving through. So um, great support uh, in terms of getting information on products, great support in terms of getting your quotes. We try and get those turned around pretty much within the hour. So if you ask for a term quote or a, an annuity income writer quote, uh, we're going to get those turned around pretty quick for you. We know that you're doing the hard work out in the field, meeting clients and, and developing interest. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that you've got what you need uh, uh, you know, when you call in here to IAMS, which you need uh, to get the, the sale made. So uh, let us let us demonstrate our back office support. And of course, that's all kind of backed up by our three ring guarantee. So when you call in, you're going to get somebody picking up that phone pretty much from about 715 central, probably till about six central. You're going to have somebody picking up that phone within two or three rings uh, guaranteed. So uh, if you're used to that support uh, with IAMS, great. Uh, for those of you that haven't experienced it, I hope you'll uh, take a better look at us. Um, so creative marketing solutions, you can see quickly aboard uh, or uh, on the on your computer screen the things, some of the things that we offer. I like to approach this in a more general fashion. So we've got a team of people here at IAMS that know your business, have done similar work for people just like you in the field, have great relationships with uh, third-party vendors uh, that can help get things done for you. And you can also use marketing reimbursement for costs that may be associated with uh, with the building of your brand and developing of your business. So what I encourage you to do is don't go outside the business. Don't go to a third-party firm. Don't, you know... It, I wouldn't even uh, venture into, you know, trying to build your own logo and things like that. Let our team, put our creative team to work for you. Let them work on your behalf. They are uh, great folks with great skills, great relationships, and they're motivated to help you because we know in the end that by helping you do the things that you need to do to create your brand, build your brand, advance your brand, and then ultimately uh, have that end up in sales, those are the things that in the end are going to help us. And so we want to help you to do that and make it as cost effective, efficient, and quality as we can. So take advantage of our creative uh the, the marketing solutions part of, of our business. We've got uh, Josh and Tasia and Logan over there, great people, great great skills, uh, and ready to help you. Um, if you haven't looked at the website lately, uh, we're getting ready to uh, go through an upgrade, but much of the upgrade is going to be in the look. A lot of the tools uh, that are out there are going to be very similar uh, to what you have right now with a couple of different upgrades. So if you haven't looked at the website, say, in the last a couple, three, four months, I encourage you to call your sales director and say, hey, walk me through the tools on there. Walk me through your annuity quote engine. Walk me through your term quote or walk me through... Uh, the, the various product informations that I need and the creative solutions you can make available to me. And let us just take make that an easy transition for you. We'd love to help you with that. Uh, so take a look at our website when you have a few minutes. If you haven't used the Retirement Analyzer in this post-DOL world and the pre-DOL world that we're getting ready to see in January, I think you're going to find this to be something that you can use <clears throat> excuse me, to help uh, kind of solidify that relationship with your client and solidify compliance with the DOL. What we're doing here right now at IAMS is we're taking care of that cost for folks that are doing business with us. So call Marcus Soller here in the office. Have him walk you through that. Let him show you a couple proposals. I think you'd be impressed on what you can do with that. And certainly uh, it's more than uh, helping you uh, with your compliance on the DOL uh, side of the business. So uh, keep that uh, retirement analyzer tool in mind and take advantage of that you know, if you're currently producing with us. Many of you are aware of IAMS Wealth Management. This has been uh, introduced uh, in the second quarter of this year, off to a great start. Um, 
happily coincides with the need for uh, some DOL compliance on that. So there's some great uh, great opportunity in the wealth management assets under management business. What we've tried to concentrate uh, at IAMS with is working with folks that maybe their primary business has been insurance or continues to be the insurance side of their business, whether it's annuities or uh, life insurance, or what have you, uh, but that want to transition. And so we've got things built to help with that process from the testing all the way to the presentation. We're holding regular meetings here at our offices for the training and the more in-depth training that you need to be successful in this business. We've got a lot of good marketing tools and things out there to help you you uh, transition into that business. At the same time, if you already are an IAR associated with an RIA, I would encourage you to look very closely at what we're doing in terms of uh, the fees that we charge and the payouts that we are offering. Yeah, I think you'll be impressed with, uh, with the opportunity there. Certainly, I think uh, you'll agree that it's a better than average uh, structure that you might want to have a look at. If you're not happy with uh, maybe the, the platforms that your RIA is offering, you want to look at what we see is uh, probably some of the more simple and, uh, and really easier uh, platforms for producers to use. And what we've tried to do with our platforms is give you the way to help you be more in the asset gathering business and, and let the RIA kind of be in the asset management business for you and make that as easy as possible while still having a nice proposal and things that you can show to your clients. So if you have interest at all in hearing more about uh, IMS Wealth Management, what I would like you to do is just quickly uh, do hit yes on that poll if you're happy with where you're at, if, or if uh, asset center management is not a direction that you uh, see yourself going in anytime in the near future, simply elect no on that poll. If you elect yes, what will happen is you'll get an email uh, that will have some basic information, uh, a little bit more descriptive of uh, what I've just told you here uh, in the past few minutes. And if you hit no, of course, uh, we won't bother you until you tell us that you have some interest. So if that's of interest to you, hit yes on that poll. I see that uh, most of you have already um, answered that poll, which we uh, appreciate very much. Uh, so I have a couple of questions here, which I will try and answer for you rather quickly. Um, the uh, fees uh, that basically uh, the cost that you have for doing business with IAMS on a monthly basis is uh, amounts to about two to three hundred per month, and that covers all of your expenses. So we're going to offer you a website, we're going to offer you the uh, database that you need, we're going to offer you the tools, we're going to offer you uh, a program called Advisory World, which you will find very useful. Uh, we have all the relationships in place for you, so you're going to find that to be a very, very uh, competitive fee structure. Uh, and then the payout structure uh, is going to allow you to charge about a 1% annual fee to your client. So I think you'll find that between those two, you're going to be very competitive in the marketplace. And I think you're going to like what we have to offer at IAMS Wealth Management. Um, I don't see any additional questions. I see that uh, there have been a few of you that either are, have not or are unable to answer that poll. I'm going to go ahead and close that out and we'll get moving on here uh, in the interest of time. Thank you all for those of you that did answer quickly. We appreciate that very much. And we're probably going to lead into another poll here. Another training that we do on a regular basis is our IAMS Academy. Many of you are probably familiar with this. Many of you have probably already joined us for Academy trainings. This has become, I think, with the industry recognized as one of the best and uh, most efficient uh, training models out there that we have. We bring in top producers. We bring in industry experts. We bring in folks uh, that... Um, uh, our look at things from more of your perspective. Uh, we do talk about some product. We will talk about income riders, for instance. We'll look at the whole uh, whole gamut. We'll look at wealth tra transfer products in a more close fashion. But mostly what we're talking about is sales and marketing and how do you grow your business and how do you brand yourself? How do you do these things on a step-by-step -step basis? Seminars, uh, mailing pieces, uh, marketing pieces, the things you should be doing on a daily basis to grow your business on a weekly and monthly and quarterly and annual basis to grow your business. So we're really trying to lay out a template for success that 
has been put together over our 31 years of, of doing business, a template for success for your business that has been proven and passed uh, on to us from many, many successful agents that we've had the pleasure of working with. So you couple that with being able to hear from four top producers on how you grow, on how you grow your business makes for a pretty good meeting. The fact that we take care of the expenses associated with that uh, really makes that, I think, is probably the reason why we've seen that grow in such popularity and become such a sought-after event uh, across the industry. So if that is something that you have interest in attending, hit yes on that poll. What will happen if you hit yes is that you will receive uh, – an email from Sarah here in the office and what she will have attached to that email uh, is a sample agenda so you can more closely look at what we talk about in general it's the agenda probably uh, from our last academy and those stay pretty I mean it's a successful formula so we stay pretty close to that um, and then also there'll be a uh, opportunity for you to register. When you register, that will let us know that you have interest in joining us at an academy here, either as 2017 closes out or going into early 2018. So as we have those academy dates come up, then we'll give you a call and see if those fit in for you. So you're not making any commitment, rather you're letting us know you have interest in requesting a little bit more information. So um, if uh, again, we've got a lot of uh, folks that have already voted, some that have not, uh, and a couple of questions. So Tom's question, oh, so the Academy, we do take care of the of your travel costs, we'll take care of your hotel costs, we'll take care of your meals uh, while you're there. So the expense to you is really an expense of being out of your office, and it's a three-day event. So to give you an idea, we generally try and hit Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so bring it on Wednesday, usually have most people uh, whether uh, flying or driving, try to have most people in by about 3.30, 4 o'clock. We'll have dinner. Uh, we'll actually uh, have a meeting that evening uh, and go through some things. We'll start bright and early then uh, on Thursday morning and go most of the day there. Have a nice dinner, and um, then we'll close up and uh, uh, go most of the day there uh, now, actually, we go about half of the day Friday, maybe to about 1 o'clock. We incorporate uh, lunch in there as well for you. Then we try and get you back to the airport. So uh, usually your flight's out. going to be about uh, you know between 2 and 3 o'clock, and so that's going to put you back to your home state. So you're gonna see, you can see you've got really three days that you've committed in time. We know that's no small commitment. I will tell you that our experience has been uh, – you know, year after year after we've been doing these academies now since the late 90s, uh, you know, I hear the remarks that I generally hear as people are leaving is, you know, a lot of information, a little bit of time. wish we had more time to go over that information. And really what we're looking for you to do is just to see some of the tools and opportunities that we have available here at IAMS, give you a, a, a much better primer than we're able to. Uh, you know, over the phone uh, and, of course, give you a chance to meet us and give us a chance to meet you in a kind of a working social environment. So great meeting. Uh, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, if that is something that is, is of interest to you, uh, hit yes on that poll. And as I mentioned, what will happen is that you'll get a uh, a uh, schedule an agenda uh, that will walk you through kind of hourly what we've done in the past and then we will also uh, get you that registration information out so thank you all for voting uh, just a couple of you that haven't voted so i'm going to go ahead and close that out if the folks that haven't voted are unable to uh, because of a technical issue or maybe you're just listening to us instead of being able to see on screen what we're showing uh, give me a call here at the office at 800-255-5055 Okay, so we have our marketing summit, uh, February 25th through the 28th uh, qualification or uh, what's the right word that we should use now? Uh, ongoing uh, invitations are still in process of being issued in the Welby through the end of the year. We're going to go February 25th through the 28th uh, will be the dates. We're going to be at the beautiful Boulders Resort and Spa. I think. Uh, we had it voted by uh, Travel and Leisure is the best hotel in Arizona. Golf Digest has the best golf resort in the Southwest. Great golf, great location, great spa. Uh, we're going to have opportunities for some education while we're out there and, and really some good opportunity to socialize and to relax and wind down as well. So we'd love to have you join us uh, there in February. There's still plenty of time 
to uh, get on the board. Yeah, so if there's anything that we can do to help you, again, give us a call here at the office, 800-255-5055. So uh, now let's go ahead and introduce, as I mentioned earlier, Dave is actually in the office today, so I'm going to turn over the microphone to Dave. Uh, as I said at the outset, Dave has got years and years and seminars and seminars under his belt. Uh, he does uh, been doing coaching with us now since about 2004, I believe, so going back 10, 12, 13 years. So been doing a great job for us, uh, for our producers for many, many years. Uh, has been doing the 401k IRA rollover over seminars himself for about the past two and a half years in conjunction also with some of the things he does on Social Security claiming and some of his other seminars that he offers. A very good success. So when Dave came to me and said, hey, this is something I think we should add, it's a proven track. This is something that has worked. Uh, it's worked for Dave and, of course, worked now for other producers as well. So great opportunity to add something to your business that maybe you, you haven't had in the past. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dave and let him get started. So. Uh, thank you again for joining us, and here's Dave. Good morning. This is Dave Pimper with Lazarus Coaching, and I appreciate everyone taking a little time here on a Tuesday morning to to learn a little bit about not just specifically 401k IRA rollovers, though you're going to get some information today, but a little bit about how to how to market that information to get in front of more people. And, and I will say this with, with a little bit about myself. Whenever I hear someone kind of um, uh, touting a system or a little bit of what their background is, um, uh, I started in business in, in, in insurance in 1981, graduated from college in, in 77. I'm 62 years old. I've, I've been in the business for 30 plus years, got in brokerage, so in securities in 84. And really my business is, you know, assets – under management, uh, 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 alternative types of investments with non-traded REITs and, 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 and um, some different types of alternative investments and then fixed indexed annuities for the guaranteed standpoint. And one of the reasons I have had success in, in my life in this business is, of course, giving good advice to those clients and, and helping them out. And I normally work at the pre-retired and retired market. But it's also getting in front of enough new uh, clients, enough new prospects. And I do that through marketing and seminars being the mainstay of that marketing. So for the next half an hour, you're going to see uh, a abbreviated uh, seminar on the 401k IRA rollover. Um, um, it isn't all the slides. It may, might be two-thirds or half to two-thirds of the slides. But I will say this is a huge market. This market right now, this market right now, uh, it's the, normally the biggest asset that a person will normally have, even bigger than their house, which was surpassed about eight, nine years ago. But, but you know, this is, you know, I was just talking to a relative of mine, and she's, she's middle-aged in her 40s and, and virtually has zero money outside but, but 200000 inside of her 401K. And she's going to retire in a better shape than she made, you know, for, for the years that she was working. And that's the way it is with a lot of the people here. So if you got questions, we will answer those at the end and, and um, certainly uh, type them on in. So when we're going through, this is always, you know, of course, those are uh, – kind of shop photos, but but look how happy those retired people are, or nearly retired people are, yeah. So called 401k IRA rollover game plan. This is a narrow, this is a dinner workshop. It isn't strong enough. You could try on your own at a, at a, at a some people don't like to provide dinners. I Dinners is part of the marketing. It's part of the reason people are there. I can't tell you how many times that I've done business with someone that just came for the meal. That was the only reason they were coming, and before they know it, we're rolling over 300000 of their of their 401k money. So let's talk about how much you really know. Now, here's some questions for you. And, and we'll take those four, four or so questions and see if you know the answers to those. Let's say you make your initial Roth IRA contribution for the 2000 tax year of April 15th of 216. Okay. How many years do you have to wait to withdraw all of your money tax-free earnings and growth? A Roth tax-free IRA you put on, put on April 15th of 2015, uh, 16 for the 2015 tax year. Well, if you said five years, you're wrong. It's three years, eight and a half months. 
The start date on all Roths are 1-1 one, one of the year you're putting in for. You can put up to the 15th of the next year for your tax return. huh? So it's a five-year rule. We always call it the five-year rule, but actually it's always going to be less than a full five years. What type of trust do you have to establish for your IRA when your intent is to make sure your designated human beneficiaries within that trust are able to stretch out the tax deferral for their lifetimes? What kind of trust do you have to have? Okay. It's a conduit trust, or they're called see-through or look-through trust. What you're doing is you're looking through that trust document to find the human heartbeat beneficiaries. So see-through, look-through, or conduit are all the same thing. What type of trust do you have to establish for your non-IRA with an annuity when your intent is to make sure your designated human beneficiaries within the trust are able to stretch out the tax deferral for a non-IRA? How do you stretch out a non-IRA? Trick question. Can't be done. Five-year rule applies. Lastly, what does the designation of persterpes mean pertaining to beneficiaries? Persterpes. Well, there's per capita, meaning per head. Persterpes meaning per bloodline. By the branch, by the root, by the family bloodline. Yeah, if you got all those right, you know a lot about um, a lot about the retirement uh, marketplace. If you missed one, you're probably the ball game a lot. If you missed more than one, yeah, yeah, this this will help you because when we're when we're coaching over the five sessions for about 45 minutes each, we're walking through a lot of different interesting scenarios, mainly around the slides of the workshop itself. So those are the actual slide. Okay, so. This is one of the very first ones, and I'll say we're going to talk about potential rollover options for your company retirement plan. 401k, which means a for-profit company. 403b means a for um, uh, a uh, uh, business like a school, okay, or a, a hospital. It'll be some type of a... a of a non-profit, yeah, 457, very interesting about 457, even though they're rolled over, 457, if there's 300,000, you roll it, you roll it into an IRA, actually, kind of bizarre, but it is non-qualified, it's not a qualified contract, it is a non-qualified contract, and what, what you do is it is tax deferred, and what happens is, is that you do roll that over as an IRA, so 401ks, 403bs, 457 plans, and I'm teaching here. I don't go through all this during the actual workshop. But, but yeah, you know, we're looking for that rollover money. So you can do nothing. Roll it over to a new company. Take a lump sum distribution. Convert to a tax-free Roth. Roll it. Transfer it. Same thing to a traditional IRA. And normally, this is where we make our hay. This is where we help the person here, the majority of this. They roll it over into an IRA. And then what I do is I, I talk about each one of the five things. Do nothing. You know, so if you do nothing, you leave it where it is, what's the outcomes? And, and that's what we talk about. Why would you want to leave it in your current plan? A lot of people don't know about the 55-year rule. If you're 55 years or older and you retire from that company plan and using that company's plan, you leave it with the company. You can take out money at 55, so 50, at 59 and a half and older, there's no 10% penalty of taking out pre-59 and a half. But if you're with that company and you leave with the company, you actually it's a pre, it's a 55 year old. You can you can take out anything after that without any kind of tax, uh, excise tax on the 10%. You have you're taxed on it. But well, you can do it at 55 instead of 59 and a half. That's a reason to leave some of the money there. How does that benefit us as the agent or the broker or the advisor? Does it? We're not working with that money. But if it benefits the client, that's what you want to do. Okay? Everything needs to be in the client's best interest. It can certainly be in in, in, in best interest of ourselves, but first it needs to be in the client's best interest. Okay? 
Other considerations, they talk about ERISA, which the 401k is under, versus the IRA, which the IRS actually oversees. Um, the protections are normally a little stronger for, for bankruptcy for lawsuits in a retire, company retirement plan than an IRA. Like Nebraska, it doesn't make too much difference, but some states it makes bigger difference. Familiarity of the investment choices. May offer lower fees in, in the 401k, maybe higher, maybe lower. Just an easier choice to leave it there. No decision has to be made now. So those, I'm not saying those are good considerations, but those are certainly considerations. So what happens is, is that when we're in talking with this group of pre-retireds and retireds, and we normally mail, depending on your, depending on your area, we either start at 50 years of age or 55 years of age, and then up to normally 69 or 70. That's about, because some people start, you know, live, work a little bit longer, but those are the age groups, and this is the age that people have bigger money in retirement plans. If any questions, certainly type them in. Roll your retirement fund to a new company retirement plan. Yeah, there's similar benefits and advantages of keeping it with the retirement plan. I also put in here uh, 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 services and guidance. Services and guidance. Where do you get that if you leave it in the plan? There are some with Fidelity Vanguard that you can pay them. You never see them face to face. They never know your whole financial um, 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 architecture. But but they're going to charge a half or a quarter percent to to basically, and they they, they it's very simplistic. We get much more um, much more in depth when you're talking with an actual agent face to face, and then we talk about loan provisions. You can't if you roll it over to an IRA, you can't you can't have lending provisions from that, but you certainly can from a, a company retirement plan. Take a lump sum distribution. So if you go back on those, see. Take a lump sum distribution as number three. Here it is. Take a lump sum distribution. Now, if you take a lump sum distribution, you're going to be taxed on that money, and the government's going to withhold 20% in mandatory taxes. They don't. They don't trust you. They think you're going to you're going to jump to Venezuela or something and never pay taxes on it. So they take it out first. <laughs> you have no say so, and you got 60 days to roll that over without it being taxable. If you want to make good the 20%, that has to come out of your pocket. So say it's 300000 Well, you got 300000 You want to go and take 20% out of that 60000 You got to come out of saving $60,000 to make whole your plan. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's wild, isn't it? Yeah, otherwise, you know, you short that money. Yeah. The net unrealized appreciation acronym of NUA, this is a, a good reason why you take a lump sum distribution. NUA is, is just this. Let's say that you work for IBM and you are going to retire from IBM or you get laid off from IBM or you get fired by Big Blue, but you no longer are employed with that firm. Let's say that you were there for 30 years and you started putting money into mutual funds, which they had, and also IBM stock, which you could buy, without, say, say even at a discount or with no commission. And so this is I'm making this up now, but let's just say that you've got 300,000 in there. 100,000 is is a stock from from IBM. 200,000 is in mutual funds, all pre-tax money. Well, you know. Let's say that IBM that that you've got a cost basis of twenty five thousand dollars and it's worth a hundred thousand. What you're doing with that money of IBM, you want to turn ordinary income tax, taking out as ordinary income tax, and turn it into the majority of it into a long term capital gain tax. It's a big deal if you're in a higher tax bracket. It's a big deal if it's highly appreciated. If it's not, then it's not as big a deal. But it has to be a company's traded stock on the exchange. So it can't be, you know, uh, Bill and Jim sandwich shop and it's an LLC or an S Corp. No, it needs to be publicly traded on one of the major exchanges. It has to be a traded stock. So let's, what happens is all of it has to go out by year's end, not portion of it. And there's two portions of this. Let's say there's, let's say there's 300,000, 200,000 in in mutual funds, that gets rolled out. Let's say put it into a fixed index annuity. 
The other hundred thousand we're going to keep in stock. Now, what happens is if you don't have a securities license, you can't do this, but you could certainly give out generic information. Say so that needs to go with it with a stockbroker, needs to go into a brokerage account. And so what happens is now you've got and it is in it's is in a personal account. It isn't rolled over into an IRA. It's in a personal account. So on that hundred thousand dollars of the value, twenty-five thousand is what you actually have for a cost basis. That cost basis of twenty-five thousand, when when it moves over, is taxed as ordinary income tax. So twenty-five thousand is taxed as ordinary income tax. How about the other seventy-five thousand? Not as ordinary income tax, is it? No, it's taxed as a long-term capital gain. Big difference of thirty-nine point six percent if you're in the highest bracket, and maybe ten, fifteen, twenty percent at the high, if you're you know if you're in the highest bracket. There's a big, big difference on capital gains tax than there is ordinary income tax. Is it highly appreciated? It's your company stock. It can't be other stock outside your company. It's called NUA. It says experience is a good school, but the fees are high by Henry Kiney. Died in 1856. Yeah. You know what happens? If you make a mistake with rolling over and transferring a retirement account, it can be very costly. What are, then we talk about Ross. Now, again, I'm not going to go through everyone. When we're actually coaching, then I explain. I mean, I will say, well, let's, let's, let, let's go in with Roth IRAs. And what is a Roth? Okay, it's, a, it's not a traditional, you know, uh, 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 pre-tax. It's after-tax money. So it's kind of Uncle Sam, you can pay me now the tax money or you can pay me later. Well, if you pay me now and then it's tax-free, yeah, most people, if you ever have a raise of hands of where they think tax rates are going to go, are they going to go up or are they going to go down in the next 10 years? Everyone are going to say they're going up. That makes a Roth, tax-free Roth, more advantageous to your client. So I talk about the specifics of the Roth. Then I go into a Roth conversion, taking traditional IRAs, converting them into a tax-free account. Well, if you're paying taxes, who doesn't want traditional where it's taxed as uh, distributions are taxed as ordinary income tax to tax free. Tax free always is going to trump, if you're paying taxes, tax deferred. Because tax deferred eventually you've got to pay ordinary income tax. Still a good, still a very, very good source, but tax free is better. On the conversion, we talk about, you know, pay taxes now, not later, partial conversions. There's no RMD. So, the, the neat thing about uh, Roth IRAs, there's no age limit. There's no RMDs. Uh, there's the spousal privilege. Once the spouse gets it, there's no RMDs. Once the kids get it or who the, the, the contingent beneficiaries are, all of a sudden there are RMDs then if it's outside the spousal privilege, but they're still tax-free. All those RMDs, required minimum distributions, are tax-free. Talk about Social Security, tax-free municipal bonds, they're included in the provisional income. The provisional income of Social Security claiming equals adjusted gross income, not counting any of your Social Security. You add half of your Social Security to that, and any tax-free municipal bond interest, not tax-free Roth distribution. Pretty interesting. It's not included in the calculations for of how much you're going to pay with, um, you know, with uh, um, uh, the uh, provisional income rule. So what happens here is is that you you can you can eliminate put enough into Roth that you're taking, you know, once his income come out that you're not affecting your Social Security. And what happens is, is that it lessens the taxes. If you're, if you're getting, if you're getting less taxes on Social Security, you're paying less taxes overall in your financial plan. Could be something very, very important. Then we talk about recharacterization or the oops rule. You, you did a Roth conversion, and you know what? As long as you, long as October the fifteenth of the year following, if you do it for two seventeen. I don't care if it's January 1 or if it's December 31st. You've got until October 15th at 2.18 to say, oops, made a mistake. 
going to redo it, going to change it back. What's the main reason people change it back? Well, I would say it, it, it differs, but one one is I think they might say, gosh, that seems like a lot of tax. I didn't think it seemed like that 22000 of taxes I got to pay. It seems like a lot. I'm just not going to do it. Or it could be that the the investment went down in value. Let's say from a couple of years ago, it's oil stocks. Yeah, oil stocks. Oil stocks went down 50%. A lot of them did. So let's say it's 100 bucks a share, and all of a sudden you recharacterize it at 100 bucks a share. You owe taxes and say it's, you know, say you got, uh, there's $100,000 of, uh, of gross um, proceeds. And on that $100,000, you're going to go in and pay, say, 35, 40% state, local, so in federal. So maybe you got 40,000 taxation. Well, whatever that stock goes through, within the next 18 months, it goes down to $50 a share. Well, you say, oops, made a mistake. And then you got to wait either 30 days or till the end of the year, whichever is later, but then you can reconvert. Now you're reconverting 50,000 or in that range instead of 100. Taxes are half as much to pay. Big deal. Big, big deal. That's just having a change of heart for whatever reason. Got up on the wrong side of the bed when I do a, a recharacterization. How to move your 401k to an IRA. This is no doubt. This is where the 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 important slides start coming on in about transferring money from a dormant 401k, current 401k. Maybe it's got a, a maybe it's got a, a 1031 or excuse me a um, non hardship withdrawal privilege in service transfer non hardship withdrawal privilege. Meaning at 59 and a half, some plans allow you to take money out and you can still work there. Some of it or all of it. We do a lot of partial 1031s. In fact, I got a seminar on that also. But indirect rollovers, direct rollovers and transfers, what's the difference between the two? When you say custodian or trustee, it's the very same language like lawyer and attorney. An indirect rollover is when the check's made to you, and those are bad news. You don't want to do it. That that in itself is not illegal or not bad. But if but you got 60 days to to to, to roll that money over. If you don't, all of it is taxed. Uh, 20% is going to absolutely come out of that company sponsored plan. If it's from another IRA and going into an IRA, no, no, then they, 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 they don't withdraw. Um, it's, it's from that company plan is where they're withdrawing that money. And you know what? Now that I think about it, even from an IRA, they may withdraw that money too. I got to double check on that. I've never do indirect rollovers. So, um, there could be, but I, I, I think it's mainly from the company retirement plan. One rollover per year limit on a, roll, a direct rollover. Transfers, you can do as many as you want. You never touch, you never have the check made out to you and you touch that money on a, on a, on a, on a, on a direct transfer, custodian to custodian, trustee to trustee. But on the indirect rollover, you actually get the check made out to you. Yeah, that goes only one per year. If you do two, everything that you've done is taxed. All, both of them. Unbelievable. So very, very harsh. Then we talk about the transfer, the custodian transfer, trustee to trustee transfer. Yeah. An IRA direct rollover transfer. So IRA to IRA. Well, why, why, why would you want to do a transfer there? You can do it with existing or you can do it with new. But you know what? You do, con you do continue the tax deferral, no doubt. So there is no taxes that are due. There's normally many, 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 many more investment options on the outside than there is on the inside of a retirement plan for a company because it's IRS-based and, 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 and not ERISA-based. Far fewer rules with an IRA than there is with the 401k, 403b, or 457. Let's say it's a fixed indexed annuity. What's the internal fee with no, with, if there's no income rider? Zero. Where do you find a mutual fund with zero? You don't. You can't. Where do you find an ETF with zero internal fees? You don't. You can't. Now, there are caps. There are surrender charges. But is there any internal management fees with a fixed index or a fixed? No, there's not. So it's lower, isn't it? Just talk to a 69 that's turning 70. He's got an account with Edward Jones. He's got an account with Securities America, which is independent. He has an account with UBS, and he has an account with B. And interesting enough, my account is the smallest account of all of them. I've had it for about six years. And of all those brokers, I just met with him and his wife, and they're moving everything over with me. Yeah, everything over. And so we're keeping about 
25 to 30 percent where it is right now, including what I have with him. And I only had about uh, 10 percent of his money. But now what happens, he's moving it all with me. And he had no absolute guarantees. I mean, a, a fair amount of this is in a is in a guarantee with a fixed index. So but what's interesting about this is, is that he felt comfortable. How did I meet this person? You're right. Through a seminar. Interesting. And that's where that relationship started five, six years ago. So that consolidation, simplification, if you start getting older, yeah, it's a big deal. People don't want to watch your investments closely. They want to go to just one person if they possibly can. And, you know, he called me up and he said kind of what he was thinking about moving it with one broker. He said, what do you think of that, Dave? And I laughed and I said, well, Dave, his name is Dave too. Dave, as long as I'm that broker, that advisor, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and he laughed. But he saw some things with me, and that's having a knowledge of retirement plans and rollovers and if you don't have a, a background in social security claiming, I'm telling you what, I I just don't understand why you wouldn't get a background. So many people, that's a huge, there's so much bad. I got another one. He's worked with Morgan Stanley, same office, three different brokers in 31 years, but same office. One was a, a, one of his children who actually moved to another office. I was third one, but, but he came to a uh, 401k IRA rollover workshop. And in that workshop, I have a question on social security, uh, uh, slide on social security. And he just got a plan and they said to have him take his money at 66. Well, he's got $1.7 million worth of investable asset, net worth of around $3 million. And he's got longevity. His wife's much younger, nine years. No way he should take that. They don't have to have that money coming in. He should wait till he's 70 and have delayed retirement credits for 8% and COLA and let it grow. Yeah, his 2500 per month at 66 is going to grow almost to $3,300. And so he said that, well, do you think they gave me bad information? And I said, well, I'm going to tell you yes, because there's a better way to use your, you know, his mother and father are both still living. They're both ones in the early 90s and ones in the late 80s. Um, she's nine years younger. Her mom and dad are both still living. They're younger. But but plus when he dies, she only has a primary insurance amount of $600 and his is 2500 She'll get all of his money. She'll jump up to all of his if she requests it. So. That having that that social security background, that's what I do. That's what I teach people. If you had talked to me six years ago, I knew virtually nothing about social security claiming. You know, and now I'm giving seminars with, with the with the 401k IRA rollover seminar. I think those those really kind of go hand in hand. It's a great way to get in front of people and just kind of show them that you know of what you know and in, 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 in kind of impressing them. I talk about beneficiary options, and then we go through each one of them. Leave blank. Name your estate or will. So, what would it be good about naming your estate or will? Well, first of all, you have a, you have a, you know, you have a will. Okay, so you could in your beneficiary, who do you want as per will? Well, you're guaranteed for it to go through probate. Guaranteed. Do you want a bene a human beneficiary to go through probate? Normally not. Real estate you would for a step up, but not a normal retirement plan person beneficiary. There's a spousal. A privilege on a spouse, your children, grandchildren, charity. I always say don't use a Roth because it's already tax-free. Why why burn the tax-free status on a tax-free investment when it can be a tax-deferred on a traditional IRA and still get tax-free um, recognition and status? Yeah. Or a trust. So you can tell when, when I'm coaching over the five coaching sessions, yeah, there's no doubt that I go through each one of those. Henny Youngman says, I've got all the money I'll ever need if I die by 4 o'clock. <laughs> Don't let that happen to you. We're talking about stretch or inherited IRAs, the separate account rule. That your, your, your inherited IRA has to be properly titled. So let's say John Doe died, senior dies, IRA, deceased, date, for the benefit of his son. There's a specific way. And, you know, that, that designated beneficiary has to be has to be um, uh, uh, dictated by September 30th of the next year after death. Now, RMDs, by December 31st of that year, they want RMDs from that account, just like regular. And RMDs on an inherited IRA are a little different than RMDs on a regular RIA, okay? 
And it's kind of cool. You can actually, before you die, you can tell them who you want as your contingent beneficiaries, a list of them that they can pick from. <laughs> so maybe they don't put that, your daughter doesn't put that uh, motorcycle gang member that she, she just uh, started dating. Yeah. Can have some protection, actually, from the grave. If any questions, certainly type them on in. Per capita, remember I said per capita? Per stirpes? Yeah, so lots of times, you know, if there's a, a death in the family or there's a divorce in the family, people forget to change their beneficiaries. And that's tough. A beneficiary overrides the will. I always tell the story in my workshops. True. I read this in a blog, a tax blog, about maybe six or seven years ago. Up in Wisconsin, a fella comes out of high school, marries his high school sweetheart. He goes to work for this manufacturing firm. Two years later, they get a divorce. She remarries. He remarries. He's with the same firm. He gets killed in an automobile car wreck at the age of 63. He has about, give or take, like $480,000 in his 401k. They go in and look uh, on his 401k of who the beneficiary is. Yep. His first wife from 45 years ago. His first wife. In his will, which he had one, he designates his, 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 his wife and children of his current wife for so many years. Guess who got the money? Yep. The, the beneficiaries of the retirement plan override the will itself. Yeah, she got it. Pretty amazing. Don't, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nightmare. You don't want that to happen to you. So per capita, per stirpes. We, we normally like persterpes, and we normally list it as persterpes. A transfer on death, TOD, is a non-IRA normally used with bank accounts and brokerage accounts. But it's, it has, it has non-qualified beneficiaries, human beneficiaries, or a trust charity. Uh, well, actually, it's usually transfer on death. It's who it transfers to. It's usually human beneficiaries. Okay. RMDs. On qualified accounts, they have to start at 70. Interesting. If you're in a 401k and you're still working after 70 and a half, is there an RMD on that money? Nope. As long as you're still working at that company. Not just working, period, but working with that company. And then we talk about something about QLEC. So this is the only, and that, that QLEC, see, I, I don't actually talk about the, the next slide. If this would be a QLEC, whatever goes dot, 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 consider a qualified longevity annuity a QLAC, Qualified Longevity Annuity Contract. I don't really love those, but they're interesting about, about not paying on all your RMD right now. So if a person's got a million dollars in retirement money and they got to take out 5%, that's $50,000. What happens if they could go in and they could only take out twenty-five dollars or $30,000 and defer the rest to a later date? Yep, that's what a QLAC does. With a guaranteed interest rate, yep, they can do that. So at least there's a lot of people that come in, just want to know a little more about the ins and outs of QLAX. Now, author Godfrey says, I'm proud to be paying taxes in the U.S. The only thing is I could be just as proud to pay half the money. Yeah. When, some, when my kids asked me when I was little, she goes, what do you do, Daddy? And I said, well, when people come in, I, I try to make more money on the money they have than where it is right now or pay less taxes to the state and to the government than they're paying right now. Both of those puts more money in their pocket. And of course we have, I mean, kid, when your kids are eight and 10 or 10 and 12 or 13, can't get too complicated, but, but our goal is a risk reward. That's what we do. What kind of reward are we gonna get for what kind of risk? And if you don't think a big hit's gonna happen in the market here pretty soon, you, you're like a camel with his head in the sand. And the do camels put their head in the sand or is it an ostrich? Well, that would be, I don't think I've ever seen a camel. Must be an ostrich with its head in the sand. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, that's why that fixed index or the fixed product or some kind of fixed single premium, no doubt that should all the money go there? Of course not. But should a portion of the money go there? Probably so. Probably so. In service non hardship withdrawal plans, yeah, if you work for a company, and you're over the age of 59 and they have this in the in the um, the plan documents, you're able to take money out of that plan and roll it over to any of the people that are on this on this webinar with us today. They got 400,000, they want to roll 100,000, they can do it. 
and still keep working there, no problem. The company gives them the option to do that. When I talk about the five rules you need to know. Have to normally be at least 59 and a half to participate. You don't want to take that money in hand. You want to roll it or they take out 20% for taxes. Loans have to be paid first, et cetera. And then if, if you know a little about Social Security, then you have this slide. If you don't know anything, then you're not going to put this slide in. But, 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 but I tell people, consider using IRA money and delaying Social Security. That has to do, you know, so when you roll over that or you have money in your 401k, between the ages, if you're born from 43 to 54, your full retirement age is 66 years of age. The, 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 the earliest it could be is 66. The latest it could be, if you're born in 1960 or later, then, you know, your full retirement uh, age is 67. So 66 to 67, that's, that's just one year. That's your full retirement age. That's the, that's the whole whole tamale right there. And so what happens is if you start taking money from your retirement plan, you're letting your Social Security grow. You're delaying it but letting it grow. How much? 8% a year plus cost of living. Cost of living for 2018, so they just came out with it. The, the trustees administration for Social Security is 2.2%. So they're going to be guaranteed 10.2%. So, you know what, if you're at $2,000 on your Social Security, you know, you're going to go up about a little over $200 for the rest. If you wait a year, for the rest of your life, you'll make 200 bucks a month or more. What happens if you wait four years? That's 800 bucks. Well, $800, that's a, that's a, that's a big time pension with a lot of firms. Have to work there for not just four years, but probably for 15, 18, 20 years. So I like using timeout kind of, I like using social security just to give the people some, some ideas of how that works, okay? But if you don't know social, then you probably should leave it out. I'm trying to put as many lines in to hook the people as possible into thinking, boy, I better talk to this person about a face-to-face -face appointment. So here's my last slides, and I'll kind of go through this a little bit like I do, and then we'll take any questions if there are some. You know, there's a lot to think about. The majority of, 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 of retirees, they're just not aware of things like this, okay? Now, and I'll say, everybody take out your evaluation form. On that evaluation form, it's yellow. I walk around the room, and the closer I get, the faster they pull it out. I say, you know, you can mark one, yes, I'm interested in scheduling a complimentary consultation. Now, I don't hear, say here, if you, mark, if you mark no, I won't call you. I'll just say, if you mark yes, here's what happened. There's no, there's no strings attached. I always say leave your checkbooks at home, but I've got dates marked off for the next two weeks that I'm available. I got lots of people coming on into the office or I got lots of people I'm going to see at their home, however you do your business. But what happens is, is you put the date and you put the time on there. So I got times at 9, 10, 30, 12, 1, 30, 5, 15, Saturday morning appointments, evening appointments. I mean, I just want them to commit on this sheet of paper. Once they commit, when we call them back the next day, I always tell them, be a little flexible in case we double book the same appointment. And there's some flexibility here. But I am, I mean, I'm hoping to get a minimum of 10 appointments out of this work. To, to, I have two, two workshops off of one mailing. So then I say, my, here's my promise to you. Leave your checkbook at home. Before you leave, whether we, we, we continue or not, uh, well, I'll uncover one financial problem or one financial concern. So ask yourself, you know, if you don't know what are the best rollover options for your company retirement plan, maybe you need to mark yes. Could a Roth conversion benefit me? You know what? May or may not. It's like it's like Cinderella slipper. If it gets, if it fits, then it's wonderful. How do I complement Social Security with my 401k? Now, if you don't do Social Security, then you probably shouldn't put this on in. And I and I teach that also on the side with, with seminar, a Social Security seminar. Maybe you need to see me. Could different investment choices benefit me? Beneficiaries, inherited designations, second opinion, sometimes the very best opinion. So I walk through that, and then I say, this is by George Foreman. I'm sure you know who George is. He says, the question isn't at what age I want to retire, but at what income. How, how true is that? At what income? Now, George Foreman's made a lot of money from boxing, came back two or three times after being defeated and won the title belt back in the heavyweight division. But you know where by far he's made his most money? And someone will say the George Foreman grill, and you'll say that's exactly right. I said, you can Google this up, but you know how much he got paid cash 
for his name endorsement. He got paid $136 million. And then what I say is I say, unless you've got a grill named after you, you should probably go in and mark yes for the consultation. And then everybody starts laughing and they might clap and that's the end. People, when you're giving a workshop like this, it's important that you know the information, but it's important that you go in and you connect with the crowd and you connect with the attendees by your demeanor, by your expertise, uh, just by the way you carry yourself in that presentation. Now, do you have to do your, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like almost like a professional public speaker. So you're not expected to do it like Dave Pimper, but you don't want, you don't want to. I, I have a video that goes out. I am went in and professionally paid to have me videotaped. So I've got an actual workshop, an hour and five minutes of me going through. You've got language on every single slide that goes on in and says exactly of what I, of what you could say you can I vary from I I I I vary about 20% every seminar back and forth you may not want to vary at all we got another real good presenter his name is Matt Gill he has other seminar systems here that's proprietary through IAMS he has one in particular he doesn't vary one bit he says exactly the same thing exactly the same thing just like it's a just like it's Yul Brenner in in the king and I he says exactly the same thing every single time you know what He's extremely successful. So there isn't just one way to do it, but that connecting with the crowd, knowing, showing your expertise. Yeah, people like to work with people that they like. So you got to be kind of likable. Okay. So I help you through this. And working this with a mentor is much easier than not. So do we have a question up there right now? Or are we going to be a poll? Yeah, we're going to be putting up a poll question. That's up there now, Steve? Okay. So no, no, you can go ahead. Go to the, I'll go to the next one because I got a couple other slides here. Just talking about it. Um, so here, real quick, Dave Pimper, yeah, actually 460 public seminars since the mid-80s. I'm producing just like you are. I'm at the oh, – we don't call them production trips anymore, do we, Steve? We no, call them – they're training events, yeah. The, 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 and if DL is listening, we do have training events coming on up, and they're great. And you know what? There are some fun. But, you know, one of the things that's fun about it is the networking that you do. Just over a, a over a beverage and, and and talking about your your business a little bit and getting some ideas from the other other uh, top producers. Yeah, that that's kind of fun. But I make a complicated subject much easier to understand. And that whole four hundred one IRA rollover lingo. If you're not if you're not doing a lot of that right now, we help you. It's a turnkey system. And the seminar coachings are very inexpensive. I, I get paid from seminars. I don't get paid from being in your hierarchy or getting an override from you. I get paid from seminar coaching. I get paid $150 for a 45-minute session. So that's $750 over five sessions. The neat thing here is IAMS goes in. As long as you qualify, IAMS goes in, and they pay for all but $195. They pay for $555. They cut me a check. The $195 I get from you from a credit or a debit card. And then you can use me as much as you want on any of your questions, not just for the five sessions, but from there on out. And Craig in my office, he we don't we, we don't have an in-house printing firm. We use a third party, but they're extremely good. You know, we're one of their biggest clients of all the people with IAMS that that I work for. Uh, um, 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 we we run that business through them. We get extremely good service. They're very they're they're very very good at what they do. Craig helps you with your demographics. He helps you with your invitation. Helps you. You know, he's 40, 40 some years old, so he's quite uh, very good from the um, computer standpoint. If you've got questions, a little bit of getting, you know, just just a lot of neat things. So, so that's that's really a, a neat thing that IAMS has. So I'll leave it this. It says procrastination is my sin. It brings me constant sorrow. I really shouldn't practice it. Perhaps I'll stop. Well, heck, it never comes, does it? If you don't take some action now, it doesn't come. I I have a man cave, and my wife got me the sign that said, free beer tomorrow. I love that. And tomorrow never comes. It never costs me a thing. Don't let it happen to you. If you saw, if you heard something, saw something on the screen today that, that, that you thought you could connect with, if you thought you were in a little bit of a, of a, uh, maybe it's an ebb and a flow, and right now and you're you're in a little bit of a of, of an ebb. You're not quite producing like you wanted to. You're not quite getting in front of enough and as many new uh, uh, potential uh, prospects. Well, you know what? Seminar market. Maybe you did some seminars back when, and they weren't very successful. But 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 having a system that's proven doesn't guarantee you success. Having a mentor or a training coach like Dave Pimper doesn't guarantee you success. But you know what it does? It puts success closer in your corner. That's what it does.
And, and Steve, I'm going to hand it over to Steve here as he puts the poll up. And certainly if you want to talk to me, just mark yes, and I will give you a call. Uh, well, Craig or Amy is actually going to call you, but they'll set up a time, and then we'll talk together for 25, 30 minutes and discuss and see if it could possibly be a fit for you. But you know what? I would love to talk with you, give you some ideas. And it's, this is an exciting time to be an agent. It's an exciting time. Is there some things changing in our industry right now? Yeah, there is. But I'll tell you what, we're just we're 101 months out. We're in the ninth year of a bull run. Any idea how much the stock market has, has gone up in that nine years? 254%. You don't think there's going to be a major decline here before too long? And the people that are in guaranteed parts of money and guaranteed strategies, you don't think they're going to look at you as a savior since they didn't lose money? And I'm a broker. I'm an advisor. I do a lot of I do a lot of advisory business from the the, the the security side, but most of my people have some anchors with guarantees. I think it's so important, and maybe no more important than it is kind of at this stage of their near retired or retired career and where the market is right now. So I'm going to go in. He's, Steve's going to go in and launch the poll. I'm going to hand this over to to Steve Murray. Um, um, co-owner of, of IAMS and um, hope I can talk to you soon. So Steve's got a couple quick things here to say, so certainly stay on. Thank you, Dave. Good stuff as always. I hear some of the same stuff uh, from time to time and it's always good. And the great thing about someone like uh, Dave and Matt Gill that we have is, you know, having that individual that helps you along the way makes all the difference and it took us a while here at IAMS really to figure that out we've been offering seminars and marketing systems for you know 31 years really but more aggressively for the last 20 or so in the first couple of years we would offer the system and not necessarily you know we'd say hey call if you have any questions to the mentor uh, to the to the kind of the leader but we'd never really formalized it and we didn't have the level of success that we're having now we think it's so important and we've got excellent coaches with excellent backgrounds uh, that are currently in the business right now and, and going through the same things that you're going through. We think that's of key importance and they're good teachers, you know, folks that are, are, are patient, willing to, to pass on their information and, and, you know, in the end, you know, your success is, is very important to them. So it's a great formula for success. Uh, there's a lot of formulas out there that can guarantee a little bit of success and there's some that that I think are set up to be uh, you know likely uh, successful is the best way that I can put that and we have over time built a system uh, that has we have seen time and time again is going to be successful for you so hopefully this is something that you have interest in uh, it's always good to chat with Dave uh, and good to learn more about what he does and how he does it so um, if you haven't voted yet Take a second, think about it. if you have interest, go ahead and hit yes or no, whichever. Uh, one thing that Dave would say if he were still online with me is that it's he's got plenty of folks in the coaching uh, queue, uh, but he likes to give everyone the kind of individual attention that they need. So that keeps him handling about seven to eight folks in any given quarter. Uh, right now, probably three or four folks uh, available and open right now. So this is something that is of interest to you. I would encourage you to, to let him know, set up that phone call and get the process started. A um, couple questions out here uh, regarding uh, Social Security training and things like that. So if you want to chat with Dave on a one-on-one -on -one basis on any of that, I would again mark yes on that poll. They'll set up a call and he can answer any more, much more specific questions that you may have. So uh, with um, every coaching opportunity that we have out there, there's always going to be some folks that take advantage of it and some that don't. And I truly believe that some of the folks that do choose to move forward, maybe it's not the best fit. Uh, and some of the people that don't choose to move forward, you never know, and I think that's a really untapped resource that you need to, to consider and look at for yourself. Is this something that I might be good at? Is this something that I can use to grow my business? If you haven't looked at seminars as a way to grow your business in general, uh, you're probably overlooking one of the better prospecting legs to your marketing stool that you could have. So, uh, you know, give it some good thought. For those of you that have voted, thank you. For those of you that haven't voted, if there's an issue uh, technologically that 
keeps you from being able to vote, certainly give us a call here at the office at 800-255-5055. Ask for myself or any sales director. Just let them know that you're uh, interested in setting up a call with Dave and his team, and we'll, we will for sure uh, make sure that they are aware of that as well. So um, with that, I'm going to close out the poll, and I want to thank you all for uh, – joining us today. Uh, been a great seminar. We've had a uh, good fortune to have a, a good group as always. And thank you for taking some time out of your day and for joining us here this morning. Here at IAMS, our uh, interest in our webinar training is to give you tools, techniques, incentives, uh, the opportunities were available to grow your business. We know in the end that's the root of our success. Uh, so we're going to keep doing that for you all here, and hopefully you'll keep taking advantage of it. Join us. Thank you for joining us here today, and join us uh, not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday uh, for another uh, episode of Building Your Business with Dave Pimper. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. How does it get any better?